All right, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about blurred backgrounds and how to get those to work in KOWP. But before we start this tutorial, make sure you've checked out the KOWP live stream number one. It's the only live stream I have done. Uh, trying to find time to do those. I wish I could do more of those, but uh, it's not enough time in the day really. But anyway, in that live stream, I did discuss some blurred image effects in that video. Start around the one minute, 30 second mark for some blurred image effects tips. Now the request I did get was an iOS style blurred background, but basically uh, this is page two uh, on my Nova Launcher and KOWP setup. This is a wallpaper that I've made using Affinity Designer. And if I go over to page one, maybe you do notice that it does blur that background out as it scrolls. So that's page one. Now we're back to page two where it clears up. Going over to page three, it gets blurry again. And then page four, it clears back up. And all I have here is a background set up, and then I have some rectangles directly in root. That's very important. You want to put these shapes directly in root, and you can apply a mask of blurred background to achieve this effect. Then we apply some animations uh, based on BG scroll, and depending on what screen we own or what screen you want to blur, we apply that there. So let me show you how to do that in KOWP. So inside of KOWP, go ahead and create your background and you may notice a blur option down here, which I'm not using. You could do this and you could code it to uh, blur on specific screens, but the way I'm doing it here is going to fade that blur in and give that transition a little bit smoother transition versus us applying a code here. That would work, however, but that's not what I'm going to discuss in this video. Over in globals, I have a BA number global for blur amount that has a maximum value of 200 to my knowledge and a minimum value of zero. A minimum value of zero would be no blur whatsoever. Now, I'll come back and talk about these colors and all this stuff in a minute, um, if we even really need to, but I just wanna go over some of the basics of blurred background. So back in items, page one blur, this is the blur that I had on page one. I've made a shape directly in root. Notice this shape is not inside of an overlap group, it's directly inside of root. That's very important for you to get the following. Underneath the FX, once you get the size of your shape, however you want it, go over to FX and underneath mask, you will have the option for a blurred background as long as that shape is directly inside of root. I apply the blur amount to this shape. That's that BA number global variable. So whatever we have it set to, again, 200 is the maximum, I believe. And then underneath animation, I have this set to fade out based on a BG scroll, the rule is center and the screen I want it to work on is screen one. Make sure you have that set to fade out. We repeat this process. You can copy and paste for your page three. I'm just renamed it. Same shape, same FX, same animation, except on this one, I have the rule set to center and my screen set to three. The center is set to screen three, whereas the page one was set to screen one. Now with the way I have these currently set up, inside of globals, I have some colors also, but these two zeros up front of this uh, color code here, these are completely transparent right now. So if I save this, and you may notice now the advanced editor looks all jacked up. The blurs do look a little weird in the advanced editor. But back on the home screen, if we go over to page one, it's just a standard blur. We're not actually changing any colors. I'm not using any colorized filters either. The colorized filters, they do work nice, but a way I like to do it is to add another shape that matches our blur and just uh, apply a light transparent color um, just so we get a slightly different color effect. And I wanna show that to you right now and we'll apply it to page one here so we can see that. So remember what this looks like and now let's go and apply color. So for page one color, right now I have it set to something completely transparent. So I'm adjusting this transparency just a little bit, somewhere maybe inside of here, but I'm still keeping that white color, um, but you can apply whatever color you want, but make it somewhat transparent. Let's apply that, let's save it. And you do notice it's a little bit wider. Let's go back to the home screen and see what this looks like. 
So over on page one, it does have a wider look to it. You can apply a transparent green, red, or blue, whatever, whatever you want to apply here to make it match your wallpaper. But this looks more like that control center on an iPhone where you want that, uh, that blurred background where like your volumes pop up, your Wi-Fi toggle switches and all that stuff. And that's what the user was requesting. So I wanted to show that to you here. But again, if I slide back to screen two, everything clears right back up. I did not apply color here to screen three, but we can easily do that with another color global. And let me show you how to get these rectangles to show up. So what I have there for page one color, it's a copy and paste of page one blur. But what I'm making sure to do here, I'm still keeping that same animation that we had, but underneath FX, make sure you take away that blurred background. That way, when you go to paint for this page one color, you can actually apply a color to it and it will show up. And this is that slightly transparent white that I added. Now, if I back out of here and go to page three color, which is copied and pasted from my page three blur, again, take away your blurred background here, go to paint, set it to whatever your color or whatever color global you want. And uh, the animation, since we copied this from page three blur to get the page three color, it's going to work the same way. I'm going to go to that page three color and I'm going to select a slightly transparent blue. So something like that right there. Let's check that, let's save it, and let's go back to the home screen and let's see what that looks like on page three now. So that's that blue blurred. And again, it's really two shapes here fading in. There's two rectangles. One is the blurred background that we have directly sitting inside of root, and the other one is that slightly transparent rectangle that has the same animation and the same size. So it's all really looking like one group that's animating together there. So with all that said, I hope that does give you some tips and you can also, you know, animate these shapes inside of Root. Here I just have a red blurred background shape that's animating in and out. I don't know what you want popping up there, but all these ideas can be achieved as long as you apply that shape directly to Root and then apply that mask effect of blurred background. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.